There is a great review by Anderson and colleagues where they kind of highlighted the research indicating that high fiber intake is associated with lower risk of coronary heart disease, stroke, hypertension, diabetes, obesity, and certain gastrointestinal diseases. Uh, there was also a different review paper by Barber and colleagues where they pointed out that fiber is inversely associated with all-cause mortality, along with mortality from cardiovascular disease and all cancers overall. And of course, a lot of times people hear that and they say, okay, correlation, association, that's all observational, that's a bunch of crap. Uh, but there is a pretty strong mechanistic, mechanistic basis from randomized controlled trials by which you can really clearly draw a line uh, between a causative mechanism that is reliably induced by high fiber intake and the types of outcomes that we're seeing in these studies. So uh, when it comes to fiber, it is a very strong and very comprehensive case for the fact that fiber, by and large, has a very positive impact in the diet. And if you're wondering what an advisable intake for fiber might be, a very basic recommendation that you see all the time is about 14 grams of fiber per thousand calories in the diet. So for a 2000 calorie diet, that would be 28 grams of fiber per day, for example. And the reason that they scale that recommendation to caloric intake is because as anyone who's done some pretty restrictive dieting has observed, it can be really hard to get high fiber intake on a very low calorie diet. Mm -hmm. I still try my best to do that. Um, like, you know, if, if I'm down on a, you know, 15, 1800 calorie diet, I do try to get higher than that 14 per thousand calorie number. Um, just to try to stay close to my typical fiber intake, uh, but without question, it gets very, very challenging because where there's fiber, you're usually going to find other non-fiber carbohydrate that's going to come with it. So when you start cutting carbs and total calories out of your diet, a lot of times you will see that the fiber tends to go with it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, fiber is, is really fascinating in terms of its impact on a variety of different uh, health outcomes. Um, and there's even some less obvious associations that have been observed. So some studies have found that fiber intake is associated with better immune function, lower chronic inflammation levels, and even a lower risk of depression. And those are some of the outcomes where it gets a little bit harder to draw a really strong mechanistic link. Uh, but I do think one fascinating kind of uh, related area of research is in the realm of short chain fatty acids. So when we consume dietary fiber uh, and other non-digestible or partially digestible carbohydrates, uh, when those start to ferment in the digestion process, uh, what we see is that they, uh, they, they do lead to the production of several different short chain fatty acids and other associated metabolites. And those short chain fatty acids and similar metabolites, uh, they do seem to have some pretty wide ranging physiological effects that we are in the process of elucidating and, and fully starting to understand, but we're really not there yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so I remember uh, a few years back, uh, I dug into the research on short chain fatty acids and uh, it's a very, very fascinating body of literature, but it, it's ki it kind of reminds me a bit of if you were to dig into the gut microbiome literature right now, mm -hmm. you can see the glimpses of like, okay, this is definitely important in in some capacity but the question is how do we make that useful how do we act upon that yeah a and for what things is it truly causative so there's there's much to be learned there but basically what i wanted to do with this segment was uh kind of highlight the fact that uh you've not lost your mind despite what you're seeing more and more on social media fiber uh within the academic world and within the world of anyone working clinically in nutrition Fiber is still embraced as a very, very uh, healthful addition to the diet within the types of intakes that I've described. Yeah. Um, now, one thing I should acknowledge is that there are some instances with certain gut-related pathologies and clinical conditions where short-term fiber reduction is part of the treatment process. So if you go in to uh, seek medical treatment for uh, certain specific gastrointestinal conditions, they might for a time put you on a pretty restrictive diet that eliminates a lot of fibrous foods. Um, but when you look into the clinical literature about those types of interventions, 
uh, it's almost always framed as a short-term elimination diet with the purpose uh, where you, you do that elimination diet, you remove foods that could be exacerbating symptoms. And once you reach a point where symptoms have subsided, you start reintroducing foods and generally building fiber back up to a tolerable level. Yeah. So a lot of people have looked into some of these short-term interventions of fiber restriction and said, oh man, if fiber is so bad for your gut, I'm just going to restrict it all the time. Uh, and that would be a misapplication of that research and generally an inadvisable thing to do, especially if you already have uh, an otherwise healthy functioning GI system with no symptoms. Yeah.